You see in this case in many iterations and I think it was time to place a air cooler but that's not the main star of this video. We have new fans from Noctua and they are Gen 2 of the famous NFA1225 and we have them in regular G2 PWM and we have them in LS G2 PWM. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough fans here to make uh, an exhaust additional one here at the top and I didn't want to place a Gen 1 because they were LS as well. So in those terms, what I did here is to give you an example, because let's be honest, this case right here with these fans is dead silent in idle, of course. But even when you crank it up with the GPU and the CPU at 100%, it gets a slight humming noise, nothing particularly loud coming from this chassis right here. And believe me, if you go with coolers that are designed in, to, in terms of low decibel range, great performance and similar stuff like that, you're gonna go with a case that is nicely ventilated and airflow friendly. And this one is it, Lee Le and Lee Lankul 217. So what I did here is, as I said, I placed uh, three NFA1225 uh, G2 PWM fans. On front, uh, we have the Noctua's NHD15 Gen 2, and we have the uh, NFA1225 G2 LS PWM at the back. Now, we're gonna go through some specs, some details, and I'm gonna give you a, a bit of a, let's say, um, comparison because I can't go and test out the decibel range. I could compare it with a, I don't know, keyboard typing, specifically if we go with certain keyboards that are definitely dead quiet. But in that sense, I don't think that will give you some idea. The only reason why I'm not doing this is that I don't have a room that is echo proof, that is solid in terms of testing out the sound of the fans. And for that, you need a room that is proof to 15 decibels. And that's basically it. So starting with specs and going with some details, uh, we have quite interesting design on the blade. So we're having a Sterox liquid uh, crystal polymer or LCP. It, the fans also feature an extremely tight tip clearance of only 0.5 millimeters. Now, when I took them out and compared them to the older one, they look quite close, but these one are just wow. And then what we have is an optimized progressive bend impeller with winglets, which can help to reduce tip vortices that are caused by the pressure differential between the suction and the pressure side of the fan blades. Then we have flow acceleration channels and the new centrifugal tubular hub, which enables the G2 version to surpass the original NFA1225's performance. Now, there's also one more uh, cool addition to everything, and I know this names and everything won't mean much to you in general, but when I explain what they did with the fans and inside, you'll understand it a bit. We have a new Etaperf motor with uh, NEFD6 PWM IC that has extremely low electric impedance and the latest NEFD6 drive system with its integrated ultra sensitive Hall effect sensor that provides super precise commutation performance. Now, inside the box, you get anti vibration gasket for water cooling radiators, you get low noise adapter to reduce the maximum speed from 1800 to 1500 RPMs. You get the extension cable because the original cable coming from the fan is 20 centimeters and then you have it up to uh, 30 centimeters additionally and four screws and uh, these uh, four NAAV2 anti-vibration mounts with NAYC1 four pin PWM splitter cable. This is quite cool. Now let's go quickly through the specs and then we're going to go through some uh, comparisons. We have 120, 120, 25 millimeter when we're talking about the size and connector is four pin PWM, quite logical. Then we have uh, SSO2 bearing, progressive bend impaler for the blade uh, geometry. Uh, we have advanced acoustic optimization from the frame technology, serial LPC material, rotational speed as I stated is 1800 RPMs and rotational speed with LNA is 1500 RPMs. Airflow is 107.3 cubic meters per hour, while the airflow with the LNA is 87 0.2 cubic meters per hour. Acoustical noise is 22.5 and with the LNA is 18.1. Now, when I usually go with these type of numbers, when we're talking about acoustic sound, it's usually somewhere around 28 to 33. 
This isn't even passing 25 decibels. Static pressure is 3.14 millimeters H2O with LNA is 1.71 millimeters H2O. And mean time before failure is 150,000 hours. I think that's that's quite impressive, I do have to say. Now, as you can see right here, we have something different when we're talking about the boxes and the packaging. Uh, you have a single pack and you have a dual pack. So you can combine whatever you need in terms of building up your system from the ground up. The only thing that I, I do have to say, this is the only thing that I'm missing and I definitely know the answer to that. Noctua still didn't release reverse blade fans and to stand on their side regarding that they are not going to release a product just to release a product they're doing loads of R&D and specifically if you take into consideration the coolers and the fans for some products it takes over five years and they maybe they are in production or maybe they are in development or whatever but what we can expect from them is not to just release a product uh, to the market and just say oh look we have a reverse blade fan that won't happen they will definitely go into some extreme lengths to bring a product that can actually deliver now let's go to the benchmark part what we have right here is a bit of a strange comparison but since i had this case with the original fans and uh, 360 aao on top i can only do that type of comparison and since I have the Gen 1, which is only LS and not the full-grown uh, NFA1225, I couldn't, there was no point of placing uh, those uh, inside because they have lower rotational speed. So, Aida 64 Extreme Edition, this is cooled with NH-D15G2. We have AMD Ryzen 9 x 3 d and we have the ASRock RX9070 XT Tai Chi. CPU went up to 89 degrees with a clock speed 4925 MHz and the GPU at, is at 49 degrees. Of course, these fans that are originally coming with the case, I left them there. It's not going to make such huge difference because this is a thick graphic card with a big passive cooler. So it can eventually go up to 51, 52 and that's the maximum. Now when we compare it to HydroShift 2 that I had it right here inside the chassis, the CPU went up to 68 degrees and the clock speed was 4995 MHz. Going into Cinebench and going with uh, 10 runs on average, this CPU had 80.5 degrees, uh, the clock speed was 4852 and the score was 40200. With the Hydro Shift, the thermals were 64.9 degrees 4952 megahertz clock speed and 40876 cinebench scores in general what i can say is that even though the thermals between this air cooler and the original um, aio that i had inside this chassis we could and can't compare but when you take into consideration that the original chassis has 140 at the back to 180 at the front and they have those covers just to prevent additional air leakage and stuff like that i think that's quite solid because let's be honest i did place on top one of the blockade here for the airflow but in general we, we're having 3120 not 3140 not 2180 and we're having 1120 at the back instead of 1140 so we're still missing one here fan at the top to create additional exhaust so i think going with the bigger fans in 140 if they produce a g2 version of 140 models then we could discuss a proper comparison but i just wanted to give you a like not a, a direct comparison in terms of 360 and an air cooler with smaller fans but i wanted to give you uh thermals scores and details about this configuration in a chassis that is airflow designed and still you know just to give you an idea how everything would perform if you're lacking one fan here at the front at the top for additional exhaust from the passive heat sinks of the uh, air cooler in general i think that's quite solid and in that other scenario i think it can only get much much better and to wrap this up, these were new fans from Noctua called uh, NFA1225 G2 PWM and G2 LS PWM. You can find them in single box or dual box as it is. Everything is basically the same when we're talking about the accessory, only you add more additional parts like the gaskets and the rubber parts that hold the fans, including uh, more screws and similar stuff.
The links for the fans are in the description below so you can check out the price and maybe additional uh, specifications and some parts that I might have missed but that will be all for today. If you find this video helpful in terms of the configuration, the design and everything all together specifically with nice wooden accent here, Noctua cables from Cable Mod and just the this uh, beige brown color scheme going throughout the whole chassis. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.